everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Juliette, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Before we dive into the content, let me cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple engagement tools you can use. All tools are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your presentation area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. If you have any audio or video issues, you can find answers to some common technical issues located in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. Please note that a copy of today's slide deck and additional resources are available in the resource list. Please have a look and download everything that you may find useful. Also, the webinar will be recorded and sent via the email you registered with. Lastly, if you have any questions during the presentation, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We are here to answer you live via the chat, so don't hesitate to reach out throughout the presentation. And with that, I'll pass it over to you, Stephen. Thanks, Julia. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on managing functional safety and development efforts for robotics development. In terms of the agenda today, this is what we're going to be covering. We're going to be starting off with speaker and company introductions. We'll then look at functional safety and provide an IEC 61508 overview, associated challenges, associated best practices, We'll then switch gears and talk a little bit around live traceability, followed by robotics development best practices, and then we'll finally wrap up with JAMA Software's robotics solution. So let's start with some speaker introductions. Go ahead, Nicole. Okay, hey everybody. My name is Nicole Papler. I'm a senior functional safety expert at Electometus. I started working with safety critical systems more than 20 years ago, working with automation, working with automotive and other domains, and always moving around in the safety critical um, projects with safety critical systems, being a developer, being a tester, being on the complete system side. Uh, about 10 years ago, I started then to work as an assessor for, for functional safety at TIF Suit. And um, about three years ago, started uh, together with my business partner, Electometers, to provide independent consulting and assessment services um, using all our experiences that we had up to now. I, If you want to Google me, I'm also active in several open source projects for functional safety, so you should be able to follow me around. If you want to contact me, my social media handle is Nick Papler, so you can find me on GitHub, Discord, and where, usually wherever you want, want to look. As Electometers, our company, together we have more than 20 years of experience. Uh, we provide a network of experts for functional safety, for cybersecurity, uh, for multiple domains, so automation, railway, automotive, and also we can provide you with services regarding uh, license compliance as processes, uh, quality management. We have a set of trainings and workshops available for functional safety, for security, or with our network, also for other topics that uh, you need to cover for critical systems. And to keep up to date and to drive topics forward, we participate actively in international committees for standardization like the IEC, ISO, or DIN, or also are in industry networks like the Bitcom or the Industry Business Network 4.0. Great. Thanks for that, Nicole. So hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining the webinar. Uh, my name is Steve Meadows, and I'm a principal solutions lead here at JAMA Software, primarily working with our customers in the industrial space, um, including robotics teams. So I've been at JAMA now for around about three years. I'm an expert in requirements management. Before JAMA, I worked extensively with the Atlassian tool stack, as well as in various implementation functions. Excuse me. I do want to briefly provide some context on JAMA software and what we do. So our main purpose is to ensure that innovators succeed uh, with client success at the forefront of pretty much everything that we do. For years of industry-specific experience and thousands of client engagements, we bring 
we bring the best practices to bear to maximize the success rate of the product development process. So we work in a number of verticals that you can see the, at the bottom of the slide here, including medical device, automotive and semiconductor, aerospace and defense, software development, and last but certainly not least, industrial manufacturing and robotics automation. So we're the largest requirements platform on the market today. Uh, and our Jama Connect platform is the number one requirements management software, according to independent user reviews on G2 Crowd. Uh, we're also the market share leader of all products, including those from bigger companies and the leader in user adoption and success. So with that, I will hand over to Nicole, who's going to be talking about functional safety and IC61508 in terms of an overview as well as challenges. So first of all, I'd like to give you an overview of what's all this about with functional safety and with IC61508. So I, I'm sure, yeah, you're here because you already heard about functional safety. Maybe you're a pro, maybe you're a beginner with functional safety. So first of all, functional safety is the topic that's uh, associated with reducing risk uh, that are associated with products that can be caused either by random faults, that means faults uh, of a, a, a sensor, faults of your microcontroller, just random things stop working or start working in a very um, inconsistent way. So one of the big topics in functional safety is really avoiding random faults, avoiding faults due to yeah, hardware components just dying on you. And the other big topic in functional safety is the avoidance of risk due to systematic faults. So systematic faults are usually faults that happen during development, that happen during deployment or maintenance of a product that are due to um, topics that are not covered, that are due to hazards you have not considered that are due to functions you haven't implemented correctly or that you haven't been tested if they are correctly implemented and then go into the field in an inconsistent or insufficient way. So functional safety usually gives you then oh, functional safety can be achieved then by the methods of engineering and of process application. That means the random faults you avoid by systematically identifying what are the critical components, what are the critical parts, what are the critical functions within your system, and to then choose suitable and robust system architectures, suitable and robust uh, components and hardware parts to be integrated into your system and then to avoid systematic faults by applying a suitable development process, by applying suitable verification measures, by using a suitable deployment and maintenance process and uh, then also going into a suitable change management process for your system so that you don't add bugs and, and insufficiencies to your system that wouldn't be there uh, by definition. So easily you don't need to start thinking about how to do this on your own. So there are standards around and one of the main or the main functional safety standard is the IEC 61508. It's a standard that talks about yeah functional safety for electrical and electronic and in any kind of ways programmable safety related systems. And although there are a lot of other safety standards around, IEC 61508 is still the not only the most generic, but also the most used and most applied standard, not only in, in other industries, but specifically also in the automation industry. 